we decided to go with a recommendation from the decorator, who is very good, for a chap that he recommended to sand our balcony, the mosaic, and to do all the marble, the upstand around the flat, and to clean the marble underneath the railings and to replace the threshold, marble threshold, between the inside and the outside of the apartment. The chap turned up. Tom and I both had a gut feeling that um, we didn't quite like him, but we thought perhaps we were being a bit prejudiced and we shouldn't be so sensitive. So we agreed a price and he turned up on one day and left his equipment um, and he left all his stones in the kitchen as you saw in the previous video and on the windowsill and the equipment looked quite old and ropey but again we thought things that you use with stones and sanding don't always look pristine. He turned up late on the day and he was setting up and again our gut feel was it wasn't right but we decided to override this and we went out for a coffee so he could set up. We closed all the windows on the bedrooms and the room we use as the sitting room and it sort of closes off, there's a door that closes this whole section off and we'd locked our bedroom door luckily. So we know, everybody knows it's very very dusty what he does because basically he's sanding off the surface and there's masses and masses of dust. We'd been gone 40 minutes and we came back. Um, it was the day of the Queen's funeral. Um, we couldn't believe our eyes. He'd opened up the, our little section where we're living. All the windows and doors were wide open. He had stuff trailing through, wires and things, extension leads. All over the floor were these white plaster footprints. And you can see the footprints here and here. They've got all their mess here. And um, they just were making a horrendous mess and the dust was unbearable. <laughs> So we basically went into the bedroom, shut ourselves in there and watched the funeral and just counted the moments until he went. Um, when he left, we went and had a look and we couldn't believe our eyes. He had grizzled before he left that he couldn't take off the whole surface. There was, it was patchy because there was varnish on the um, mosaic. Afterwards, we realised it wasn't varnish. It was his machine was so old it wasn't actually catching where it should. Um, the second thing is that he'd been, he's obviously a chain smoker so there were cigarette ends everywhere including inside the house and he was drinking on the job and he was leaving his empty stuff but the worst thing for me was I went into the kitchen and there was draped some shorts atop and the most revolting um, shoes with some socks sitting in it. To make matters worse, they've left their dirty clothing in the kitchen, a bag down here. And what I find really offensive is this. Some old socks and shoes left on the floor in the kitchen. And that for me was the final straw. So I rang the decorator up and I said, um, I don't want him coming back tomorrow. You need to come have a look at the mess he's made. So he came over and looked and said, no, this isn't right. He said, don't worry, it's my problem. I recommended him, I'll sort him out. I said, fine, we'll pay him for the work he's done and then he has to go. So next morning, we didn't have a very good night's sleep, as you can imagine, because Fortis is the name of the chap that did the sanding, is built incredibly well. And he's not the sort of person that you'd want to cross. Um, 
and he's also got quite a short fuse. So the doorbell goes at eight o'clock and it's Andy. And Andy comes up and he says, don't worry, I'll take care of everything. Fotis is coming this morning. And so is Constantinos. Now Constantinos is the chap that Tom has befriended, who's Irish Greek, and he has a whole string of properties which he renovates. And we're a bit surprised he was coming. We said, why have you rung Constantinos? In fact, Tom was quite annoyed. He said, oh, no, no, um, it's good that Constantinos is here. So we said, okay, fine. Next minute, Constantinos comes up, very diplomatic, very calm. And then Fortis arrives. And then we all go out and we point out the things that we don't like. And there's a big um, conversation with Constantinos and the decorator and Fortis. And it goes on and on and on. And then they come back and they say, look, um, he can correct all the things that you don't like. Um, and he can continue working. And we said, no, we don't want him. So there's more pushing for us to have him finish the job. But Tom and I have learnt over the years, if our gut says no, then it's no, because it's just going to get worse and worse. So we said we'll pay him. So this was conveyed to him. There was, I imagine, quite a bit of saving face. And the news came back that he wanted 600 euros to go. Tom immediately said no, 400. And I just touched Tom arm and said, pay him the money and let's just get rid of him because we're going to have argy-bargy otherwise. So Tom paid in the money. He made a big thing of counting it out in front of us. Um, he took his stuff and he went. And then everybody else went. We're all upset. And then I found out later from Andy, the decorator, that Constantinos also has a very short fuse and has been known to throw the odd punch. So obviously that's why he was called as backup. We had already the night before contacted somebody else who has a machine that is dust free. It's just gone six o'clock. We've been up since half past five because we're waiting for the new chap to come and look at the balcony. Um, it's still dark outside and um, we haven't had the best of night's sleep. George, he turned up with his two assistants and they've done a fabulous job. None of the nonsense that we had before and today he finished and we realised that our gut instinct was right and we were really glad that we got rid of him. But I have to say that all during that process, I think Tom and I had hit rock bottom. Um, we felt sort of very isolated and we felt it was really difficult. And everybody we've spoken to have said refurbishing a flat or a house here in Greece is really difficult because most people, all they want to do is rip everything out and put new in. And what we want to do is restore and that's not something they do here. But we'll persevere.